Okay, let's talk about the idea of links in Ubuntu. Now, this is something that can really simplify some of your file management tasks, make things much easier to work with, but there are some things we need to know about it. So first off, what's a link? Well, if you've worked with a GUI operating system, you know the idea of a shortcut, right? I create a shortcut to something, I double-click on that shortcut, and it takes me to the actual thing. All right, a link works kind of like the shortcut with a few differences. So to understand the differences, we need to understand what an inode is. So I've already created a file that we're going to play with, and I'm going to do an ls-l, and that will show me the file. So right here I was really creative, and I named the file original, because this is going to be the original file we're going to link to. If we cat original, it's going to tell us, hey, that's what I actually put it. Put in there. This is the original file that we will create links to. Okay. Now, we need to understand the concept of an inode. So to view it, I'm going to do an ls-li, which is the i is going to say view the inode number. And right here, we see this number. Now, this is, think of it as like a database object that contains all the metadata for the file. <clears throat> so this, I mean, it identifies the file name, it uh, what permissions there are, who the owners are, all that stuff is maintained in the inode. So with that information, we'll see as we create hard and symbolic links how they deal with this a little bit differently. But for the moment, just think of this. A uh, inode is basically the critical information for that file. Now, I'm going to create a link to this. And so I'm going to do ln, which creates my link. And I'm going to create a link to the file original. And I'm going to call this hard link. So now if I do an ls-l, you'll see original and hard link. So if I do li, you're going to see that both of these actually have the same inode number. So what it what a hard link is is basically another copy of that same inode number and the information that it contains. Now, the cool thing with this is I can use this hard link to manipulate the same data. So if I cat hard link, it's going to show me this is the original file. So I'm going to nano hard link and I'm going to add in a line that says this is data that was entered from the hard link file. And then write out and exit. So if I do an lsli now, you'll see that they still have the same inode number. And in fact, they still have the same size. If I cat the original file, you'll see that we have that second line of data. If I cat the hard link, you'll see we have the exact same data. So I can now edit the uh, file, edit the content of the file, either from the original file name or the hard link. Now, one of the cool things about this, I'm going to make a directory temp, and I'm going to move uh, the original file to temp. And so I see that I now have a folder called temp, and I have my hard link still here. So let me cat hard link. And my link still works. If I ls-l temp, or if I cat temp forward slash original, no wonder that didn't look right. You'll see that the data is still there. Okay, so I moved the... Uh, original file and the hard link still works and the reason it works is because it's tied to that inode which identifies where that data is in fact I can delete we we'll look at this in a minute I can actually delete the original file the hard link will still work so it's basically another reference to the exact same data let me actually go ahead and move temp backslash forward slash original back to here. All right, there we go. 
my original and my hard link are back here. Okay, there are a couple of there's a couple of benefits of creating a hard link. One is you move either the link or the original file around. It'll still work. If you delete the original, you still got the data through the hard link. So those are a couple of big benefits. There are a couple of drawbacks. One of them is I can't move my link off to a different file system. And the reason is because inode numbers are unique for every single file system. <clears throat> So if I move that, obviously that wouldn't be pointing to the same data. Moving that to a different file system doesn't work. It also means I can't do it across the network because that would be a different file system. The other thing is I can only create a hard link to a file. I cannot create a hard link to a directory. Now, there is another way to create a link as well. So the other way to do it is by creating a soft link. So I'm going to do ln, and I want to do an ln to the original file, and I want to name it softlink. And if I do an lsli, I want you to see, whoops, I did that as a hard link, not as a soft link. So let me remove softlink, and let me do this again, ln-s. Uh, will create a symbolic link, also sometimes called a soft link, to the original file named soft link. Now let me do an lsli, and you'll see a couple of things here. Number one, this has a different inode number. You'll see it's identified as that L, which means this is a symbolic link. You'll also see when you look where the file name, it says soft link, pointing to original, and soft link is in light blue. So, hard links are going to show up just like the original file, white text. Soft link is going to show up with a different color that identifies this as a soft link, and you'll see the arrow that points to that new location, which mean, or the original location, which means this is a link to this particular file. So, let's see what we did before. I want a nano soft link and I'm going to add in another line this is data that was added from the symbolic or soft link file right out and exit so now notice the file the size of the uh, Hard link and original are the same. The soft link is a much smaller, it's 8 bytes. So let me cat original. And there's the data that was added in. Cat hard link. And there's the data that was added in. Cat soft link. And there's the data that was added in. So all of these three, this is the original file. This is our hard link, which is a another reference to that same file and this is a soft link which is a shortcut or a symbolic link which is a shortcut now benefit of soft link or symbolic links um, it can work across different file systems so I can create a link that crosses a network or a different file system it will work just fine I can also create symbolic links to directories and that's something I can't do with a with a hard link. Now, there is a drawback to soft link files. So I can move that soft link around. So I'm going to move soft link to temp. And if I do an ls-l for temp, okay, I moved it, but look, this broke. And the reason it broke is because my soft link was to a relative path. So it doesn't work. Let me move temp forward slash soft link back to here. And now our soft link works again. And you can tell because here it was uh, red, that means it doesn't work. Now I can adjust that a little bit. So let me give you a little more practical example of where we might use one. Um, I want to look at my log file, and my log is in forward slash var forward slash log forward slash syslog. So this is my syslog file, which is great. 
Okay, that's a longer path to type. So let's say I wanted to create a, short, a faster way to do that, less typing. So I'm going to create a soft link to, and we're going to uh, do forward slash var, forward slash log, forward slash syslog, and I just want to call this thing log. And so here is my log file. So now I can cat log, and it will display the log file for me. Now, what happens if I try to move this one into temp? So I'm going to move log to temp. ls-l for temp. And look, it still says it works. And the reason it does is because I put in the absolute path, the entire path for the syslog file, which is great. Um, and now this gives me a shorter, faster, easier way to get to the data that I want. Okay. Now, when we moved soft link to the temp folder, it broke the link because it could no longer find the original file because I didn't give it the full path to the original file. I just said, hey, this is right here. Now, that illustrates another drawback to uh, using soft links. So let's say my original file gets moved. So I'm going to rm original. And if I do an ls li, Notice my hard link is still here. It still has the same size. My soft link looks like it's broken. So I'm going to cat soft link, and it says, yeah, I can't find that. But if I cat hard link, that still works just fine. So here's the other big difference between soft links and hard links, or symbolic links and hard links. If you remove the original file, the hard link is still going to work. It's still going to have all the same content. Basically, it was another uh, inode, another database entry pointing to that particular content on the hard drive. So just removing the original inode that pointed to that data doesn't make the data go away. However, because a soft link points to a path, if you remove or delete the file that the soft link is pointing to, the soft link no longer functions. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of any idea about working with hard links and soft links. Um, couple of thoughts. Uh, you probably, I mean, use them. Uh, they can be very, very helpful. Uh, one thing you might want to be a little bit careful about is not overdoing it and making it hard. You know, Go so or work so hard to make life easier that you end up making it more complicated because you can't remember where all the links go to. Um, so that's something to be aware of. I like using the symbolic links or the soft links because I like the fact that it lets me create a link to a directory. I think that is super useful. I think the fact that I can do it across file systems is even more useful. Hard links give you that nice little extra protection, but remember some of their limitations. So now that you know how to do it, you can customize customize your soft links or hard links, customize your shortcuts to make some of your workflow a little bit easier.